And now we have a really great score by David. And David, it's really great to see you uh, active again in in these challenges. And yeah, I mean, just you really worked out a lot of stuff very logically and very carefully. And uh, yeah, just this is a really fun, very, you know, very promising uh, entry. <clears throat> a few little things to kind of fix in it, I feel. But uh, but yeah. Um, there's a couple of strange things. You've got uh, you've got pizzicato um, like harmonics, and that's not really a thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like I mean, you, yeah, you can play pizzicato harmonics with very very soft music, um, and on cello they actually work out pretty well. But it's still not really a thing. Do you know what I mean? Like like here you could go like open string D, you couldn't actually get a harmonic on this D, right? Because there's nothing, there's not enough room below it to like really do, you know, there's there's nothing to harmonic off of, right? So this could be an open string. And then this D could be an, the octave node, right? And then you want this A as the octave node for, for this A, but it's still just so soft. Do you know what I mean? Like if this whole page were like triple p or if this if this whole passage were triple p then you might just be able to get away with that but then like so see this would have to be an open a and then i'm kind of looking at this a little bit more and then now here you want like harmonics on b's and that's just not possible right and an f sharp and so on so yeah so you just really have to rethink that 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 would not work i would say just forget about the harmonics and just score just straight pizzicato do you know what i mean um, yeah, and then we've got some strange dynamics in here. You know, we've got like sort of crescendo or diminuendo. Like we've got that, you know, we've got, we've got crescendo, diminuendo. And then we've got diminuendo without the crescendo, which I guess is just sort of like saying, hey, you know, the, you know, the second voice or the first voice or whatever. But like, you just have to, you have to add it to everything, right? You can't leave it out on certain points. So then I would say here, mezzo piano, like with the oboes, was there any reason for them to be louder than the flutes, right? So I do like the scheme here of of trading off, though, like, you know, having uh, the first flute on the first two baton strokes and then the second flute on the next one. And that's good because, like, when you take that approach on other things, then you can divide it a little bit. This is, I mean, this is playable. It's kind of weird, but it's playable. Um, that's probably harder for bassoon, just like that more, I mean, it'll sound like it, it's playable, but will it sound great? You know, that's the big question. So maybe like going to VZ in smaller groups, like, like, uh, first bassoon takes this and then the second bassoon takes those four notes, right? Uh, dovetailing on the third note, right? That might be a better scheme for you there. Anyway, so, uh, but 
the the big question is do you need to mark mezzo piano in the middle of a hairpin you do not need to mark mezzo piano in the middle of a hairpin in fact it's better not to because like then then the players have more room do you know what i mean if you're just specifying hey you have to play mezzo piano in the middle of this you know i mean i mean piano is a big world right it's a huge world all to itself and the way over here on this little edge here is triple p and quadruple p and everything else and double p uh, and then here sort of intersects mezzo piano, mezzo forte. We have sort of blending dynamics over on this side. But then here in the middle, this P, uh, this piano world is big. It's big. It can be inhabited by, you know, you can go piano diminuendo, piano crescendo, whatever. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going straight down to pianissimo or straight up to mezzo piano, right? Just let it flex. Let the players find their own thing. Take out those mezzo pianos in the middle of those things. Right, and is there any need for? Yeah, you know, I think I think this might have been. This might have just been um, copy pasted. You know what I mean, and then um, and then trans uh, transposed. Because it's sort of the same markings that kind of don't totally make sense. So look, yeah, there's just no need for that to be mezzo piano, right? It's just make everything piano. That's just that's the world. That is it, you know. And then your orchestration will sound so much more beautiful. So yeah, I mean, so it's it's, um, I mean, this is similar to some of the approaches that we've seen, and of course, like you know, how many people have orchestrated this one passage? Seventy-five people, right? So we're going to run into a lot of of similar approaches just right here at the beginning, but all the same, it's you know, it's still nicely you know, nicely balanced, nicely proportioned, you know, nicely crafted. I I got no problems with that here. I'm not sure why you want, like, just a a a, um, a harmonic on this note, right? I mean, is this a harmonic sounding an octave higher? Is it a harmonic like would be would the harpist be playing, ping ping, and then right here hitting this this string, and then getting the note above, right? So it just yeah that that would cause some thought in my mind this is not a harpistic line at all right you know you're asking the harp to go diddle 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 dee, bum 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 it's just really that's like a that is a wind line it's better for the harp to like pluck certain things like this these three could be plucked right but just yeah this just really does not you know it's more of the you know, this is more like pianistic writing or just like kind of condensing parts in other from other instruments into the harp line i would say just like really use only those notes that are absolutely necessary to use. And this, of course, is just going to get buried in the texture. The harp would need to be marked up to mezzo forte anyways, and that should be right here in between the two staves, not below. All right? So just put a mezzo forte mark there, and then just like, then nuance your hairpins or whatever you decide, end up deciding to do. But yeah, but yeah, I would say don't, don't like take that first baton stroke and stick it onto the harp because it's, yeah, it's it's not going to be very elegant, and it will be buried, right, by all of everything else that's going on. Even though this is just wonderfully controlled, right? It's everything's soft. You've got muted strings. That's all great, but it still is not, you know, um, you know, it is still going to overwhelm the the harp just on the sheer amount of richness of tone of everybody else, right? You can have very soft passage with everybody playing like crazy and then you know but really soft but and then the harp can't compete because just the richness of the tone of everything else will overwhelm it and even you know unless it really plays out there just just you know but if it's playing like the same notes as everybody else then it'll just get swallowed okay so um moving on you kind of like carrying over some of these strings like into the bassoons and the bassoons turning it into an octave contra bassoon this is not a, a realistic scoring for contrabassoon, especially not these trills. Okay, um, I mean, it is playable, but it's, it's, you know, it is, it is just really going to, it's going to be very, very rough down there. There's really kind of no need for it. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I mean, it would be better to see how low you could go with the second bassoon part and keep the bassoons down, right? Or just have the contrabassoon playing parts of this, right? You know, like uh, going da 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 ba ba da dum, but no trill, right? Just the trill will be just very, very um, not clumsy, but just 
you know, brutal. Do you know what I mean? It's a different kind of thing. Very graceful, brutal people out there. But yeah, but it's like don't don't draw, don't write like beautiful, long, graceful, fast passages for contrabassoon unless you really know that contrabassoon player. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's it's not that it's unplayable. It's just that it's just you know it's well you just have to see it for yourself, right? There's certain people that shouldn't be on Dancing with the Stars, right? That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, um, yeah, and then this kind of like you know could this be a clarinet line and this be a um, a first bassoon line and this be a second bassoon line, right? How much of this could be played on second bassoon? Anyway, that's uh, just a thought. So. Yeah, then English horn, and then this all sort of builds, strings coming back in. That's all cool. I would say, just like I've been cautioning everybody else, just, just try to stay away from kind of low trills in general, like really, really low trills. Um, you know, may, may not give you the effect that you expect, right? I mean, it is it is it's workable, it's fine, but it just, you know, it, it has a tendency to confuse, like it's not, it doesn't make things smooth, right? It has a tendency to kind of shake the air in the room. Um, you know, rather than like really all be part of the same thing, unless everybody's really trilling it exactly the same. Like if they work out, you know, we're going to do like a quintuplet here and everybody plays that quintuplet exactly, you know, unless that, like if you have sort of a nebulous trill with everybody kind of trilling as much as they possibly can, then it's a different thing. That's kind of more of a noise producer. Okay. And then we've got, yeah, this is all good. I liked all this. This is nice. Um, very cool to have the bass clarinet continuing on uh, alongside the trumpets. You know, I, I mean, it's a it's a strange line that the bass clarinet up this high is kind of more like a um, it's more like a flute. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that rather than um, than necessarily a uh, a clarinet, right? It has kind of a more flute like sound. Uh, unless it's really pushed, um, but yeah, but you know, I don't have any, I don't have a huge problem with this. Otherwise, it's kind of neat to see the trombones and horns working together. Yeah, with muted trumpets, that's really fun. On the next page, we get into the A section, which is a lot of fun. Now, this is all really beautifully scored, except that you know, it, there's just too much dynamic mixing in here. Do you know what I mean? It's like like once again, piano is a big, big world. Like everything should be piano, right? And then instruments that might be too loud will be pianissimo, right? So everything right in here could be pianissimo. And here, I don't think that like unless this is really an actual solo, don't mark it solo. So just like, like you know, first trumpet, right? Otherwise, like the the um, <clears throat> your conductor might be trying to bring this part out, right? Which I don't think is really the intention but i really love this rhythm that da 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 you know that that's such a cool idea i don't know how many people might have done that i this just doesn't seem as if i've seen this yet before so um but yeah kind of neat to see it um you know in the violas and the trumpets and bassoon that's that's a really nice combination yeah and then a little bit of second uh second oboe so yeah, so so that all works pretty well. Um, yeah, so I'm just still I'm still kind of don't know what this mezzo piano thing is doing there. That just make it all piano, right? It'll it'll balance fine with real players, right? Um, right, and then you know without like sense of sword, we still have muted strings here. Yeah, and like this is just too soft, right? This is going to get buried in all the stuff that's going on in the horn, so you won't even hear it, right? So it's better to have it matching the dynamics of the oboe and uh, first clarinet and so on, right? So, yeah, but then, you know, nice doublings, though. Like you've got your cellos uh, kind of playing along with everything, you know, those same staccatos. They're not really doubling, but they're they are um, like joining in to this whole motion that's going on in here with the trombones and the uh, and the horns and so on. Uh, pretty neat, um, you know. And then just like a little bit of double bass down there. Um, yeah, I mean, 
this is all going to work fine, but just like don't be too fussy with the with the doublings. It's a little strange. You got a staccato on a dotted uh, rhythm. Better just to do a staccato on a on like an eighth note or a quarter note, right? Because it's just a little counterintuitive. It's more like mezzo staccato, right? If you do that, and it's still not really the official way to do that. So just you know, just put in an eighth note or a quarter note under a staccato. Um, yeah, I like this coming in here. Like you don't need two fortes, unless because that will that means hey, that means these are both accents, right? If you want that, just put it in an accent mark and be really clear and modern about it. Yeah, you know, percussion is all really is all fine. Yeah, that's snare drum. It should be marked here. Um, yeah, and the and then here the snare starts to pick up and play like that same riff or that same ri uh, rhythmic uh, uh, idea right in there. Um, yeah, so kind of, kind of just really cruising along. I mean, this is possible on pizzicato, just as long as it isn't a whole lot faster. And in fact, I would, I would probably suspect that most conductors would want to, um, you know, bring down the tempo here. So this will not be as, as lightning fast and elegant as, you know, just, you just need to fix a few things to make it possible to play at that speed, I think. Um, yeah. So, so here, like once again, confusing dynamics. We've got nice, strong strings here. Why is there, you know, this, we've got this mezzo piano and piano stuff in the string, in the winds. Why aren't they playing strong here, right? They should be, you know, at least the, the piccolo and flute and, you know, anything that kind of goes along with it should be playing strong. So yeah, so that needs some fixing. Um, yeah, and then it's just a little nebulous here. You got forte. Is it coming back down to piano here? Are people going back to soft here? Right, and yeah, so it's just just really kind of uncertainly marked in terms of dynamics, so kind of hard to tell. And then here, this is all piano, mezzo, forte, piano, mezzo, piano, and so on. You know, just pick a foreground and a background, right? So like your foreground, maybe mezzo, forte, everybody play mezzo, forte, uh, and then like the uh, horns can be a little bit back. Piano is fine, All right? I mean, I see what you're you're doing. You're sort of marking dynamics by function, but it's better to mark them by instrument section, instrumental section, right? It's just a lot stronger. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, and then we get into this part right in here. This is really really fun. Um, phantasmagorical. Right, um, I kind of wish there was a way to bridge into this because there's like, like this sets up this part here. This is the beginning of a new part, right? It's not doesn't the the beginning of the new phrase does not actually happen at the time signature. It happens a bar later, right? It's setting this up, right? This is just building up to it. So I kind of wish that there was some way of bridging into it, like. It, the orchestration taking on this color and then paying off here rather than starting so early. Now here you cannot do you cannot mark this kind of dynamic without saying subito afterwards, right? So forte crescendo piano subito. Yeah, Cuz it's just as easy to um you know for this to have meant to, you know, this could have been mistakenly intended to be a fortissimo or this could have been a forte forte pianissimo, right? So you just have to mark it here. You know, anything to stop people from raising hands in the rehearsal, right? And then here, what what's going on here? Like, is this also crescendo piano? All right. So just not really sure what that is. Now here, you didn't mark any dynamics for the celesta except for just P or mezzo forte. And look, look, I mean, it's better just to you know just to score to this and not be too loud. Right. The celesta is not really going to be heard until right around here. Right? And this should all be, I would say this should be, this part here should definitely be written in treble clef, right? All right, so, um, yeah. So, anyhow, I mean, this is all beautiful and mysterious and spooky. I just think, like, something with more force in it here to bring this up to that higher area should just have more, let's just, you know, more sweeping winds and maybe arcing strings or whatever and then all of a sudden you're soft here at the beginning of this new idea that's just 
you know, it, it just seems like that will work more, especially since you have like forte crescendo that is playing over the Glock and the and the Celeste, which will get buried, right? So anyway, that's just my two cents on that. But this is beautifully spooky. I have absolutely zero problem with anything happening here. Might be a cool place to introduce some like like string, some just very eerie string tremolo or di or sorry harmonics, whatever. And then I see here we we're without mutes, and now we're back to mutes. Okay, that's all good. And then right, and then now we just switch over to this particular texture, uh, you know, clarinets and flute in clarinet and flute in octaves that is fine with celesta and a little bit of strings that's not too bad um and then yeah just kind of have a sort of more horn like trumpet like um you know kind of a thing here with the uh <clears throat> with the english horn doubling the bassoon and i think that just like you could even just have the english horn playing that top line right because if it's going to be competing like you know, if you have really high bassoon, that is like the worst place to try to ask it to do something that will com complete or try to blend with horns, right? So it's just like, because the horn will just completely blow it up, blow it out of the water, right? If, if, if you're able to control this and make it really soft, then that's a different story. But still, you know, just asking the bassoons to go really high and then play alongside horns, it gets a little bit out of balance there. So yeah, and then just the same thing on this page. And then, <laughs> this is kind of fun. I have no problems with most of what's going on here. So yeah, just building up to that, building up, and then the, this is great, this accented staccato. You could probably, like, just mark marcato, like marcato staccato is kind of, I mean, it's kind of like an exaggeration. Here you have marcato staccato accent. Right, so uh, there that kind of nuance isn't really possible on snare drum. It better just to mark accents, right? I mean, what's a staccato on a snare drum, right? Okay, and same thing with the tambourine here. So it, look, just mark marcato like like marcato plus staccato. It the the players are already going to have a certain amount of staccato in there, right? So I would just say mark marcato, and then. Same thing here. You could just mark the marcato accent here on the strings, and you get the same basic idea here, right? And but but avoid it in the in the um, in your brass because it's just not in that nature, right? For that, you know, it'll just basically swamp everybody else. Uh, it's really cool to have these running um, trumpet lines. Uh, it's a little strange up here, like no dynamics, like no guide to tell us like how loud this is going to be played right we really do need to know that uh, you know because that's that's going to be some powerful playing anyways okay right and then we have accented tenuto i think you could just say tenuto like just an accent and then just say ten period and that will give you the same basic stuff but this is all really fun this like uh, abortive apotheosis as i like to call it and just bringing everything down this you cannot do this forte decrescendo to piano cutting off before the brass get to piano right because what's going to happen is these instruments are going to disappear into the brass and then the brass is going to just be louder than everybody else and that's all you're going to really hear towards the end you know better to have them decrescendo to pianissimo here right and then that makes sense here, and then th this there will still be a balance going up to this point, right? You still feel the drop off dreadfully, right here. You know that just you'll just feel that just falling off a cliff right here, in terms of the winds, but but that's okay. I I think I know what you want there, so you know that's all good. Now at B, <laughs> we go on to this next particular section. I thought this was a very cool way of dealing with it. The, um, you know, arpeggiated bass clef and bassoon, you know, sort of ripping up to that point. Kind of fun to have some snare on that. Uh, and, you know, that all works pretty well. So this is a combination of uh, piccolo and flute 
and you kind of nice the way that you're bringing out individual pitches with longer note values in the first instrument and then just having the back and forth from the other players so you need to like slur the other players so that you know so that they're not kind of continually interrupting the flow of the of the first players right so the second players just have to have these like you know you'd want to slur like this right right so that we have the integrity of the articulation in both parts right and then the same thing here for the uh, for piccolo All right oops yeah so anyways then you just you know put that on the English horn um, and then you just you know cool to have the the um, lower winds you know crawling upwards towards it that's a really cool thing and then th yeah it's just like yeah i don't know you know i mean does that contrabassoon part you know that high g is that really needed in there it's g sharp i mean yeah it's playable a little wheezy but yeah um you know that that's there's nothing there that couldn't be played better by your bass trombone Right and clearer, and just just give them a softer dynamic. Right, just have them play pianissimo. Yeah, speaking of which, there's some missing dynamics in here. Um, yeah, so yeah, and then we've got um, uh, stopped horns, stopped horns. What's going on here? Right, we seem to be missing some uh, some stopped markings. If that's the end of the stopped horns, then you have to put like just put the little same it's the same marking as a harmonic just the little o on all the parts and then you don't have to worry about it after that unless you're going back and forth all the time right and muted c trumpet this all is going to work fine and once again you know if we are tallying up with this throw in you know throw in slurs so that we can so that this the emphasis on this stays uh where it should be though i will say one thing is that you're giving so much weight to the accompanying uh, eighth notes and very little weight to the actual melody. Do you know what I mean? Right in here. It's just really not, you know, that's, you've only got two players on that melody and, you know, and just incidentally falling into place with the people playing the eighth notes on the other parts, right? It wouldn't have hurt at all to have like the, the first trumpet help out right rather than playing these triplets which are are being of triplets playing these uh eighth notes which are being you know already w really well supported in other parts right so yeah um but you know it it doesn't hurt it's all it's all good it's just it's just not you know not much emphasis on that melody and then here, it's nice that you're kind of cutting it short. And then here, this does make sense if you wanted to make these separated instead of uh, slurred, All right? Just give, but I would say maybe add a tenuto or accent or some sort of stress mark on them, all right? Just to make them cleaner. And then there's this nice frolicky part right in here. Um, yeah, and that's that's all cool. I don't see any reason whatsoever why this should be um separated it like divisi the way that it is i get i suspect that this was copy pasted from one of these parts and you know you ended up with um you know divisi parts you just don't need any there's no reason to go divisi there it's like you know you need the fullness of those strings in order to blend with all the stuff that you've got going on here but this is all fun it might be a little bit too much support in the bass you know to have like all the lower heavy brass plus the uh, bassoon and contra bassoon and the uh, just just makes this really incredibly heavy down here um, yeah and then also you got bass drum thumping along as well okay um, yeah and yeah and this is pretty cool right in here this works good just building up the energy again right um that all works good and i especially like the the horns like blasting away or or uh 
staccatoing away on that. And then pretty much kind of the identical thing again, same treatment. Um, yeah. And like, no reason why this shouldn't work fine. Yeah, I think that that's all good. Yep, it was just, you know, so it's, you know, it's basically kind of like the right hand here of the piano part and then just like just hitting all the eighths uh, as staccatos in the horns. And I like this back and forth stuff. Okay, that's all good. And then we sort of we end with this part right in here. The harp really won't be heard until right here. Like this this thing right in here is just better, you know. You know, you could have made it a lot stronger with like a uh, bass clarinet helping out right in there. All right. So, um, yeah, and then it just just merrily kind of starts to go back to bubble and everything like that. So, so look, I mean, it's a it's a nice strong score, David, don't get me wrong, but yeah, just I think it needs uh just a lot of touching up and some simplifying of parts and, you know, and and cleaning up certain areas and and I mean, there, there isn't a whole lot that that is completely wrong or 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 just you know completely needs to be uh, you know thrown out and start over. Not at all. Um, I think your your general conception of this is very uh, is very strong, is very artistic, and you've got some great textural ideas. Very grand scoring in this. Um, yeah, but just like maybe some proportions need to be fixed. Maybe some just basic approaches to dynamics you know, need to be adjusted. Like, I mean, here's the climax of your piece and you're at mezzo forte, right? Shouldn't this all be fortissimo? All right, so just uh, maybe there's some copy pasting stuff, you know, like for instance, like here, like the snare is playing fortissimo and everybody is playing mezzo forte. It just doesn't make any sense. So there's just a bunch of like editing stuff that needs to be done on this. Um, but yeah, but look, I mean, just, but I mean, I mean, who am I to complain like about anything? It's just was such a great entry to this, to this challenge. You know, I'm, I'm totally not um, casting any aspersions on it. It's amazing. So thank you so much for this, uh, for this great entry. And wow, man, if you could, if you could make the next one in 2020, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm.